And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, and away we go. Another week has flown by. <clears throat> the bread I'm eating for lunch will not be rye. <laughs> you fly by with the Boeing 787. 787? Brand new plane, baby. Made, being made for Britain. By Boeing. Let me ask. Let me let me let me uh, ask. Is this a uh, a commercial airline for the common folk or only for the uh, the muckety mucks, no, no, the big no, shots? No, it's a big sucker. So they want to. I guess big they want to make more profit per flight. Well, I thought they were doing that with the Concorde. Concorde went bye bye after it, many years. It, wasn't there a noise problem with the sonic booms? Well, there was, but the point is that uh, they, you know, yeah, what they happened? wanted to travel faster from uh, point to point, point A to point B, and they did. So what happened with the Concorde? Yeah, if you if you could travel much faster, uh, you carry less people, but you can go back and forth more often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, sir. I really don't know. I don't know why the United States does not have a modernized rail system like the rest of the world but that's another uh, that's another mystery you know yeah. we got uh, we got the uh, old dinosaur Amtrak you know chook 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 pop 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 derailment today the whole the whole system we have in the United States is a derailment Crap. really all right thank you for joining us this is progressive discussions i'm your host James P Madonna <laughs> and I would like to introduce my co-host and mentor and the founder of Newsletter Censored. That's right, Newsletter Censored. Founded by this gentleman in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? <laughs> Global warming is here. Climate change is here. The weather here in uh, Northeast... Here? Huh? The weather is here. Northeastern New Jersey has been very erratic. It gets warm. It gets mild. It gets humid. It gets dry. It's freezing again. We have, you know, we have like day to day. We don't know what season we're going to get here. Mm -hmm. It's insane. It's so absolutely it was insane. Was in the 80s, yeah. You know, but anyway, yeah. I digress. Um, let me. Uh, get my uh, notes here uh, oh by the way incidentally everything we discuss politically is part of ours our series capitalism in a conch shell there's the conch soaking that conch energy from uh, the briny deep Davy Jones's locker King Neptune whatever you want to call it Poseidon Yes, uh, let's start the show off with a moment of silence for uh, the former WWE superstar China. Um, she was found dead, I believe, in a hotel room in Los Angeles, a drug overdose, hey. if I'm not mistaken. They have ruled out foul play. Uh, the woman had it rough. She had a very rough, tough life. Um, I don't know. I mean, her her life slowly went downhill. She originally 
was actually engaged to uh, Triple H mm. back in the day. They shared a, a house together. They already had a house picked out. They were living together, I believe. And to make a long story a very short, Stephanie McMahon stole uh, uh, Triple H from China. Ah. And then, you know, then uh, Stephanie McMahon ar arrogantly brought her into a room and yelled at her and told her, she's mine now. He's mine. More or less. And, you know, rubbing salt in the wound. Uh, uh, not caring, not feeling any remorse, like a, a spoiled, a coddled rich girl would uh, react, being selfish and not caring about other people's feelings. And that was that. And then she, she got fired because there was a, I guess, there was a problem there. I don't know what the main reason was. But uh, then China's life started getting uh, difficult. And the poor kid, only 40, 45 years old, only 45 years of age. So a moment of silence for China. And uh, and Prince died at 57. Did the autopsy show anything with Prince? Not yet, but TMZ is reporting drugs. You know, these are grown adults. If you die of a drug overdose... Okay, and there's no foul well, play. Well, it might have not been uh, that. It might he was taking Percocet because he had some kind of a problem with pain. Oh, uh. so he was on Percocet. So who in the day he was flying the other day, and they had to they had to make an emergency landing at Illinois, I believe it was, to take him to the hospital. Well, you he know, he did have a bad hip. You only Heard his hip. you only deal with big pharma when you absolutely have to. <laughs> Just like surgery, always get a, 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 at least a few opinions. I mean, only if it's absolutely necessary. But if you get addicted to something, you should seek out help. Dic addicted to anything, you know. I mean, but still, I, I mean, we have compassion. Uh, for people that uh, died way before their time and a moment of silence for the both of them My grandmother always said famous deaths come in threes Okay, yeah, her, her real name was Joni Laura Laura. I believe she was from Rochester, New York He did come in threes China. Well, who's the third? Roberts. Dolores Roberts. Who the hell is she? Everybody loves Raymond. Oh, the, the old the old lady? Yeah. She died? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the other day. Holy crap. So, I didn't know that. So, yeah. you know, I was thinking about uh because I watch Everybody Loves Raymond. I watched the reruns. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I really, I mean, Peter Boyle and, and Robert, the guy that plays Robert Barone, his brother, they, mm -hmm. especially Peter Boyle in particular, he really cracked me up. And I, I, I mean, it's, I feel bad that, um, that he's dead. I mean, he was, well, what a fantastic role for him. Of course, he's a, he, he played a, Frankenstein too. Like. Young Frankenstein. <laughs> And uh, uh, he was a character actor uh, before that. He was established as a, as a famous uh, character actor, but uh, but she died. Yeah. The one who plays Marie, isn't it a shame, man? How old was she? Did they, did they she say? She was 90 or so. She was? I believe so. I believe so. So she, was up, in, she was up in years like, like Peter Boyle was when they were doing the show. Dolores Rock. I didn't know that. So, I'm sorry. So that it's a mo moment of silence for the, all three of them. I'm really shocked because I I, um, I enjoy the comedy of uh, not Raymond. He's a, he's a very annoying, neurotic, spastic, he's a doofus. spastic, doofus, uh, insecure. But the others, uh, the parents. That's the whole show. It's just like Seinfeld. Seinfeld is not funny. No, hell the no. The other ones, it's especially George. George Costanza supposedly 
uh, represents Larry David's life <laughs> in Brooklyn in his younger years. So no wonder he made a comedy of it. <laughs> so, um, um, oh, uh, Jason Alexander, there's a scene, um, I'm sorry if we're getting too light in the monologue, but there's a scene from um, the show uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm on HBO who, where Larry David is the, the head person, I mean the lead person of the uh, <laughs> comedian of the show. Um, there's a scene where he's sit sitting down uh, having uh, coffee or whatever, lunch, with Jason Alexander, and Jason Alexander um, it was not happy that he's uh, typecast as George Costanza. He hates George Costanza. Mm -hmm. He says, because everybody calls him to this cool. day, hey, George, hey, Costanza, hey, Co you know, he says, Costanza's an asshole, so Larry David gets offended and says, an asshole? What, what do you mean? It that was me. I, that represented my life. <laughs> yeah, well, once you get typecast, I mean, whether or not you're wealthy from being typecast or not, many actors and actresses do not like to be typecast. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a typecast horror movie mm -hmm. um, person and you can't get other roles, you know. But be thankful you're wealthy and famous off of the typecast roles. There are many actors, actresses, models who never make it, who are always aspiring actors. So be thankful for that. But um, be content with contentment. That's a shame, man. The Walrus Roberts. Mm. Wow. All right. It's been a rough past week for me, you know. <clears throat> Everything is... Let me tell you something. Today's young millennial employees that happen to be female, the guys are different. The guys listen to you, they pay attention, they, they're pretty good. I never had a problem with the millennial males uh, in, in like working in offices or working in sales departments. But there's something about the millennial females that they just don't care. It's like their mind is somewhere else. I have been dealing with nothing but um, business-related incompetence all this past week. From stores to calling offices, uh, calling law firm. It's like, I feel like I'm, again, I'm in a Twilight Zone episode. It's like, yeah. It's, it's really across the board, this incompetence and, and the attitude, you know, like they don't want to be bothered, you know. Anyway, let me start this off with the, um, the fact that the Walton family that owns Walmart is worth $144 billion, but this year the government is giving them back six billion dollars in tax breaks. Wow, a hundred and forty-four billion and they're I actually that's divided among four people. Right. Which is not nothing to sneeze at. The Walton family. Four people. They're getting six billion dollars back. Wow. Well, you have to give the money to those who have. What do you want to do? Give it to the poor? What about all that lovely uh, minimum wage with no benefits job creation Walmart has uh, is responsible People for? People working at Walmart do not make enough. They are on Medicaid. They are on food stamps. Which they Obama the government support Obama signed an, a, a a tremendous food stamp cut lately. Barack President Barack Obama. I'm very shocked at him. For doing so, a very, very uh, astronomical well, sum being cut Mr. from Mr. Clinton did it back in 1996. Oh, but they never think of cutting the wasteful military budget. No, no, no. 1.5. When you add it all up, 1.5 trillion dollars. So for the military. So people are having a lot of trouble. 
getting it through their uh, thick skulls that today's Democratic Party they're actually they're blue dog corporatists. They're That's not correct. moderates. They're they're flat out corporatists. That's correct. And uh, the, uh, I call them democrats now. You they're they're thank. they're not working for you. They're working for the top one percent. You can thank Mr. Clinton for that too. I mean, wanting the T TPP, uh, uh, the um, was it North American uh, Free Trade Agreement? NAFTA. NAFTA. Uh, gutting out welfare as we yeah. know it, uh, um, uh, getting rid of Glass-Steagall, I'm talking about between the Clinton administration mm -hmm. and Barack Obama. All, all the actions done, by, oh, the Monsanto Protection Act. So all of this is evidence that the Democratic Party is not progressive at all. It is not the party of FDR and JFK. They're corporatists. The two-party system is the problem. And I had a dispute with some of the... Uh, you see, on Facebook, all these um, pro... pro all these pro so-called progressive and pro-democrat uh, pages seem to care more about saving and preserving the Democratic Party. Yeah. And, and and getting the first woman president in the White House yeah. than, than anything else. They don't care about the good of everyone. They're not yeah. all they're not all inclusive. They're they care more about political correctness and the Democratic Party. And I tried to tell them your Democratic Party that you're trying to save and preserve is not progressive. Hillary Clinton is not progressive. And <laughs> you know, with all these women who want a woman in the White House, how come they don't want Jill Stein? A great woman. Yeah. A Dr. Jill Stein, a, 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 a Elizabeth Warren. They never talk about these two ladies. No. They never talk about, um, how's Barbara Boxer, by the way? You like her? <laughs> oh, she's a corporatist. Like Nancy Pelosi? All right, forget about yeah. her. Uh, um, yeah, you know all these women that look like crones? <laughs> they they're all they always tend to be trouble. Not scones now. Crones. Oh, I like blueberry scones. No, crones. Crones. crones witches. They, they're all trouble. <laughs> they're all trouble. All of them. And you would think with all the the money Hillary get Hillary Clinton gets paid for her speeches, you would think she would go to a, a famous plastic surgeon and get a good facelift for the campaign. You would think <laughs> that. You would think that. But uh, okay, here's the is what's bothering me. Now, we already established that that saving the Democratic Party and retaining the two-party system is part of the problem because it involves big money in politics. Right, right, right. It is not pro... No party. It, it is pro uh, Citizens United. Status quo. Right, exactly. Now, they're, they, they're not thinking... The, the feminists that just care about the female in the, in the White House are not thinking really hard and deep about this, their decision. They, uh, they're not doing their research. They, mm -hmm. uh, their agenda is very selfish. Mm -hmm. Because to be unselfish, you must be all-inclusive. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Yes, yes. Where's that guy? Leonard Nimoy. Or the one. Logical, the logical thing to do. There he is. God rest his soul. Old man Leonard Nimoy. And mm -hmm. here's the Bernie bird, by the way. Which is the word, I hope. Anyway, they're not getting it, is what I'm saying. So, based on what I just said. Um, I want to address the obvious uh, and proven um, which and it's very surreal in this day and age voter fraud in the Democratic primaries particularly Arizona and New York State now why is why is the uh, Bernie Sanders campaign staff and the Bernie Sanders campaign manager doing nothing about this voter fraud and why, here's the surreal part, 
why is Hillary Clinton's delegate doing the auditing of the New York primary uh, yeah the New York primary investigating the voter fraud isn't that the fox guarding the hen house conflict of interest you're damn right it is you're damn right is a conflict of interest now, wait a minute what about 22 days I mean hours <laughs> oh yeah I was in Facebook prison for 22 hours because I had an argument with a um, a, uh, a Hillary Clinton supporting troll that didn't have any logical or logical um, uh, reply or any facts to debate why people should vote for Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. It was all trolling. It was all trying, you know, trying to push my buttons, get under my skin. So I exploded on her and I called her Cuntzilla. Her name is first name is D. I guess D is short for Deandra. I'm just guessing. And uh, she's a, a black lady, a girl, and uh, she uh, was a feminist, is a feminist, defending uh, uh, Hillary Clinton and saying that, uh, you know, demonizing all of us uh, Bernie Sanders supporters. Mm -hmm. We're all bad. We're all bad. We're bad. We're this. We're that. We're hateful. We're this. We're that. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're all like, you know, putting us. Actually, the feminists on the Facebook page, uh, too informed to vote Republican, actually put us in line with the Trumpeters. Said that we were hateful and on the attack, just like Donald Trump's people, like Republicans. Mm -hmm. We were on the same level as Republicans. Oh, so we're supposed to kowtow to the female in the White House concept. We're supposed to... Uh, 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 Bernie Sanders is not supposed to defend himself in any way during the debates with Hillary Clinton because she's a woman and, and, yeah, well, and, and a man should never raise his voice to a woman what and, and yell at a woman and this she couldn't handle me telling her off this D and she she cried like a baby to Facebook and complained about me and I, got, I was in Facebook prison for 22 days. <laughs> well, every uh, thing that Bar Bernie is saying about uh, Hillary, such as, you know, uh, uh, taking the money from Wall Street and, and uh, yeah. voting for the war, everything that is accurate and bad, they are calling, the Hillary band is calling an attack. No, it's not an attack. It's truthful policy. Your judgment, my dear, is lacking. But they are calling those attacks. The truth is like... I could say it's like my thermos, but... The truth, the is, truth like, is like a box of chocolates. Oh, I hated that movie. <laughs> the truth is like this conch. It's in my hands. It's real. It's tangible. Mm. I could feel it. I could see it. I could hear it. That's the truth. How can the truth be bad? How could the truth be demonized in any way, shape, or form? How could the truth... Republican right-wing Christians do it all the time. Well, uh, evangelicals... Um, yeah want to um in in these in these red states i don't want to call them bible belts because they know nothing about the god of the bible uh -huh. you have to know something about the bible to be yeah, called, called bible bible belt yeah there they want to ban everything that has to do with sexuality oh, you yeah. name it dildos now oh, vaseline and tissues yeah did you see that article the masturbation stuff what what it, in, what, it encourages masturbation Why do you think graham crackers were invented because they taste good <laughs> mr kellogg mr kellogg didn't want kids masturbating so he wanted to feed them grains so they instead get of meat so they get obese oh the testosterone that's created by by red meat makes kids masturbate. oh that's bad if you bad if you unload your hold on i gotta do my little gesture with the shillelagh the black don't show it. If you 
if you're waxing the old bishop to a right-wing evangelical, they're so <laughs> preoccupied with what you do mm -hmm. in privacy, mm -hmm. what you do with your life, that, and your my, in my opinion, it's a big distraction off of them because they have more skeletons in their closet than anyone else, these right-wing evangelicals. So you can't, they're, uh, they're obsessed with other people's sexuality. Yes, they are. And if you're and they are choking quick. a chicken, they don't want that to happen. And they are quick, and they understand that if they call you out first, your defense never, never gets on paper. Oh, it's you know like I mean? it's like trying to get um, it's trying to get play-by-play -play action on Bernie Sanders with the uh, the, the American uh, mainstream media. You yeah, have a fat well, chance you're going to get that happen. Exactly. But, well, uh, yeah, true. You know what I like to do with these evangelicals? You're so obsessed with banning um, masturbation, and, and 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 sometimes there's a there's a good-looking uh, woman in the picture. You know, politicians. You know, there was, actually, there was this blonde that uh, she wasn't bad looking, but, but she was anti-sexuality. My answer is, want to come on your face. Hey. How do you like you like apples? Well, I want to come on your face. How do you like them apples? Mm -hmm. It's you know what? It's insane. Of course it's, it's insane. insane. And, and, and even uh, jo uh, Justin Dana Spears, uh, we were on the same page with that. I think he's, he's the, the one that posted the article. It's, it's, it's totally bonkers. Yeah, well, and he lives in, 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 in a, a, a red Bible Belt Marcus state. Town. He lives in Oklahoma. He's from uh, there. Well, they get too much face time and they get too much uh, publicity and they should be yeah. back in the woods. Because it's, out, it's so outrageous it's so ludicrous the things that come out of their mouth that it's worthy it's newsworthy like if you're oh but all the good things that people do is not newsworthy like That's Jimmy right. Carter are uh, building helping to build a home for poor people battling cancer at the same time that's not newsworthy. No. Uh, all the good things Bernie Sanders has done in his career, or what he's what he stands for now, that's not newsworthy. No. It, it, it's like, well, uh, the media, I know, does not want to promote anyone who is progressive. Of course not, because that, that has to change the status quo. All right. They are, you know, they're they're satisfied with the status quo. They don't want you going out there and you know, upsetting everything. The yep. apple cart, and the apple cart represents the top twenty percent, huh. and the tax breaks they get, and the offshore tax havens, and you know, the and uh, writing the laws for the, the dictatorship country. of the corporations and the wealthy. That's what we're living under right now. Now, do you do you think you viewers out there? That was a perfect example what I read about the Walton family of Walmart. A family that's worth $144 billion. Do they really deserve one penny of a tax refund? Well, remember one thing. They inherited it, the money. They're silver they did not earn it. They're silver spooners. Sam Walton earned it. He left it to these indigents. Okay, these people who don't work. They like the royal. They'll be the first to bitch about somebody on food stamps. So okay. it's like they're they're kind of like the royal family of England. The the well, the any Walton, kind of you know. The Walton family kings were queens. born were born into wealth, and they don't know what it's like to to be a have not. They know nothing of. In the old days, we used not. to take a lot of that money. Simply because we did not want big fortunes to be inherited. We wanted you to earn yeah. your fortune. Well, Dr. Bill, the only rich family that ever had the compassion to work for the poor and the middle class was, was the Kennedys. 
the Kennedys. That they're the only exception to the rule. You know, Ted, the late Lady Ted Kennedy, Kennedy right? J, the late JFK, Robert, Robert F. Kennedy, Kennedy yes, the, the brother, uh, um, all deceased, um, and um, eh, what are you gonna do? But anyway, I, I was listening to Jill Stein. I really dig what she's about, mm -hmm. and um, she's a woman. She's female. She a woman in the far White House. Work she's female. Jill Stein. But that's not, not good really. enough. That's not good enough for the mainstream no, media. No, no, Jill no, Stein no. is is not the kind of woman that the mainstream media is looking for. That's correct. Neither is Elizabeth Warren. You don't hear them interviewing her. her see them interviewing her. You don't hear them mentioning Elizabeth Warren's name. Elizabeth Warren apparently did endorse Bernie Sanders. Yes, she did on the Stephen Colbert show. I saw him in my own eyes. My yeah, own ears. Yes, it. she did, but you know. And then she uh, hawked her book. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, hey, I knew there was a by the way in there. Remember yeah. Ralph Cramden on Honeymoon's By the Way? At the end, you give him the by the way. I have a book to promote. <laughs> That's the reason why I'm here. Um, by the way. Um, I hear that Facebook has been uh, <coughs> censoring um, certain things uh, uh, concerning Hillary Clinton's emails, the infamous emails. They're, they are not uh, they are not showing the update on the investigation of Hillary Clinton's emails. And it doesn't surprise me because Facebook is a very corporatist company. They're, they're not progressive at all. That's why they throw all these advertisements at you left and right. You know, every time, every time I have a post on my Facebook page called Progressive Discussions, every time I have a post that gets a lot of views, they're bothering me about clicking the boost button and paying to, to promote it even further. To for me to pay. I ain't paying those bloodsuckers one penny. Not what, one red cent. Whatever they do. And how they get the information, I don't know. But every time I order something. Yeah. I go up to Facebook. Lo and behold. There's advertisements about the damn thing that I just ordered. You know, even when I log into my email, I see that also. All of a sudden, everywhere, I'm yeah. seeing ads. I ordered this shit. This, Why do I want to order more? I'm seeing ads, not only for the same product, yeah. but for similar products too, yeah. on different websites. Something out there, some entity is, is doing this. On different websites, mind you. I don't know how they're doing it. Maybe they, uh, maybe it has to do with cookies. They, it, but that's spying, then. Yes. Hey, there's your free market capitalism, all you flag waving teabaggers. There's your free market capitalism for you. But they're doing something. It's all underhanded. It was all. It's all originally rigged from day one. The whole system is rigged. And my final word to those ladies on that other democratic page is that democratic socialism is the only hope for the poor the low income and in some ways even the middle class it's the only hope because free market capitalism has always been rigged for the wealthy period i'm reading i'm reading a book right now called confronting capitalism and the guy who wrote it, Mr. Kotler, he's, of course, defending capitalism. Well, if you're but, rich, yeah. But then he lists 14 problems with capitalism. So he's giving you, he's playing devil's advocate against himself? Uh, obviously, Is that what he's he, doing? he just doesn't want to, to change the system. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. Because they, they have this idea that, 
only capitalism has allowed the people to uh, earn more than any other system in the world. See, this man obviously you know? wants to pay less taxes and make as much money as he can off selling his book. And under democratic socialism, you could make money off your book, but you're going to pay your fair share in taxes. So, big deal. It was not a problem earlier in this century, and etc., with uh, 50%, 74%, 91% margin, the tax rate margins. It was not a problem. Truman Eisenhower. Now all of us it's a problem. Yeah, wh wh wasn't they don't pay nothing. Wh wh wasn't the tax rate on the rich high during the prosperous 1950s? That's what gave us the prosperous 1950s and the middle class. Eisenhower was high taxes upon the rich because there was a lot more money in the little guy's pocket. Yeah. And that's how everything got stimulated. That's how the economy got stimulated. More spending. That's correct. The more money you put in the little guy's pocket, who's the true consumer, by the way, the more money he puts back into the system mm -hmm. and spends. Mm -hmm. The more he spends, the more he makes, the more he spends. The more he spends, the better the economy. The better the economy. It's all the like... The better the economy, the more businesses open up. It's all logical. The more jobs are created. And real, like the conch. Logical. It's it, it makes sense. It's not rocket science. Something that doesn't make sense is now uh, uh, all the tax cuts <coughs> that we've endured, that the rich have gotten over the years, trillions and trillions of dollars. Right. And they don't want to give back. Uh huh. My pencil. Oh, that was a pencil that fell. I'll That's get it. I'll correct. get it. I'll get it when we break for lunch. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't want to give back. They just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and getting more and more. It's on top of the garbage can. There you go. Okay. Listen. Now we will sink our teeth into these readings. We were very long-winded, but it was a good long-winded. Hold on. The bells. The bells of St. Mary. Now we sink our teeth into these readings. Bernie Sanders is an independent senator who is using the system to change the system. Yeah, he had to run as a Democrat. He had no choice, really. Sanders voted against immigration reform because... It would have increased the number of low-wage immigrant workers in this country, further burdening our already stressed welfare and educational systems, and providing more low-wage labor for corporations. H-1B visas. Sanders voted against a bill that would have allowed victims of gun violence to sue gun manufacturers which would have resulted in more companies and manufacturing moving out of the country. Sanders is not some crazy socialist liberal. It's an undisputed fact that the greatest growth and prosperity for everyone in this country happened under policies that challenged income inequality in favor of a more equitable tax system. Yeah, why, why, does a, why does a socialist liberal have to be crazy? Sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> we built the Hoover Dam and the bridges of California. We sent men to the moon. We can do great things again. We can fix our roads and bridges. We can build high-speed rail and transition to green energy. Supposedly went to the moon. We can create millions and millions of good-paying jobs again. This is not fantasy. We are not uninformed. We are not unre unrealistic. And we can change the system. The flag is up on the moon. Is it? Yeah, it is. What the hell? 
Well, the flag. How do you fake telemetry? The flag. Uh, how come uh, the lack of gravity doesn't make the flag go go upward? How there's come the flag total, is sticking straight up? There's not a total lack of uh, gravity on the moon. There's some. The moon has some gravity. Yeah. Yeah. Is Alice there? Is Alice Cramden lying there right now? And if it went up, where would it? Where where would it go to? Well, I guess I guess there's just enough gravity to keep the flag waving straight. The flag does not wave on the moon. It is stiff. Oh, like my shillelagh. That's correct. Okay. Utah. Political leaders and anti-pornography activists say hey, on Tuesday. Here we go. That children's minds are being corrupted in a world where graphic sexual images are a click away. Heaven forbid you should empty out your flapjacks. The remarks were made as a spirited defense of the state's declaration that pornography is a public health crisis. Pornography is a many splendid thing. A parade of speakers, including Governor Gary Herbert, spoke during a ceremonial signing of the Declaration. Uh, Governor Gary Herbert? Calling pornography a plague. Wow, it's a plague. Sex is a plague. Pandemic! Pandemic! And scourge! Like Ebola? That warps children's minds, threatens marriages, and contributes to sexual violence. What about all the um, the high-profile politicians, mo most of them conservative, that are supposedly suspected of being involved with this pedophile sex Ooh. ring, this, this underground pedophile sex ring? Critics say Utah is overstating the effects of pornography. Of course which some say can be a healthy sexual outlet for adults. Did they, did they ever consult with the nation's top psychologists and psychiatrists about before passing this stupid law? No, 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 no. They, 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 the Republicans do not respect science. You know that. They don't respect science. No. That's good. No, they just have their cult. The, uh, the, the, the Vaseline, the stupid Vaseline and Kleenex and tissue uh, law was in uh, Utah. It was the Mormons wanted to uh, put that uh, into effect. Uh. So that means the Mormons are a form of right-wing evangelical uh, cultists. They are all cultists until they prove their deity. The, yeah, the Mormons believe that uh, Jesus came to a man named Brigham Young. Is Brigham that Young. And they believe and Joseph Smith. And they believe that they believe Brigham Young and Joseph Smith. Well, the they angel Baroni gave them the you know the golden plates or you mean the book you of mean, Mormon? You maybe. mean Boney Maroney? Yeah, do, Mr. Baroni. Do the mashed potato, do the alligator. Remember that song, Boney Maroney? Dun dun. All right. I never heard of the angel Baroni. He's not in the Bible. Yeah, but there's so many angels, they, maybe there is a Baroni. There's only three of them named in the Bible. What about the... Um, Michael? What about the Catholic Lucifer, Church calling Raf and Ra Gabriel. How, What about Raphael? The Archangel Raphael. The Catholic Church talks about Ra the Archangel Raphael. Why would you believe anything the Catholic Church says? They have a statue to Raphael holding a fish. Holding a big fish. I said, why would you believe anything the Roman Catholic Church well, said? Well, how do you how do you know there's not an angel? It's the devil's church. But how do you know any, there's no angel Raphael? It's the devil's church. Well, he might not be Ark. He might he might be high ranking. He's not an Ark. There are only three Arks. Right, but he's probably... I just named them. But Raphael is a famous angel. He's probably high ranking. He's probably most likely We're not high debating ranking. Raphael. All right. We're debating the Roman Catholic Church and what it says right. about Raphael. Well, well, you said that um, the the fish is the earliest. It's a Christian symbol. It's the earliest Christian. I don't know about early. Symbol. I don't know about late. Well, it's what, a Christian symbol. Well, what's the earliest? So that means if you have a uh, 
a an icon or a statue of a uh, early Christian fish. You can like light a candle to it. And no, why would you light a candle? You don't believe in lighting candles and novenas and shrines and statues. Because and that is not how the Bible, the, the God of the Bible is worshipped. That's why. Well, what are you worshiping? Out of thin in air? spirit. So you don't make a holy, you cannot make a whole little no. ho a holy shrine in your no. house? No. So what do you stare at when you uh, uh, communicate? This is Roman Catholic stuff. Right. Don't tell me. That's nothing to do with the God of the Bible. Don't tell me you act constipated with your eyes squinted and your hands up in the air like Ted Cruz. Don't tell me that. Don't tell, please. Simon Magus began the Roman Catholic Church. Boney Maroon. Simon Magus was a Persian sorcerer. Oh, he was? Oh, he was. I thought he was Roman. He tried to buy an apostleship and get the Holy Spirit from Peter. Buy it? That's correct, buy it. Because he saw the miracles they were doing with the Holy Spirit. So and he wanted to do that. How the heck do you purchase... That's like giving the... The point being... Yeah, point being, right. That the God's Church and the Roman Catholic Church are different. Okay. That's the point. Okay? The one is true and the other is not. So, making novenas and relics and all this other crap is garbage. Thank you. Well, I have my... Uh Historically documented a cross of Caravaca, which has much. The cross is not even related to Christianity. No. Not at all. Well, the crucifixions depicted in Hollywood are supposed to be uh, stakes, right? Poles. That's correct. So what? What do they do? They just the hands were tied to the top of the. That's correct. Oh, and they then they hung straight down, right? That's correct. Okay. Jesus was crucified on a tree. That's what it says in the Bible. On a tree? Yeah, that's a, what it says tree. in the Bible. Most likely, it might have oh. it might have even been an olive tree. Oh, the cru the crucifixions were they did use olive wood. Yes. Who knows what kind of wood they use? The documentary of uh, the, oh, you know, the, documentary. the Holy Sepulchre. Sepulcher. Oh, you're going to challenge the Archbishop of the Holy Sepulcher in Jerusalem? He says the crucifixions were made of olive wood. You're going to even challenge him? I don't know if they were made of... But who the hell is he? But that means the olive how, is, is holy wood. How is he in the true church of God? The holy wood. No, he's there as a, a sentinel for the... Um, yeah, for what? Where the uh, they have the actual wood from the Jesus' um I just said, what cult is he in? Oh, originally, uh, I think Greek Orthodox. There you go. It's truly unbelievable that so many people have indicated that they are voting for Donald Trump. It doesn't surprise me. There's a lot of bigots out there. This man has proved himself persona non grata to the entire European community, along with China, and they laugh at us. And Latin America is not crazy about him. Over the possibility of having him as our president. He is obnoxious. He's obnoxious. He's a fascist. He's, He's uh, arrogant. Self-centered, and still likely to say the wrong thing to the wrong person. Crude and crass, crass and crude. Why would we put a man like him in office? It is unfathomable. Because he's going to build a wonderful wall, and walls work. Donald Trump said that. They say he is acting now, and he will do none of those things. He is going to appear more presidential in the days to come. You know, it, it's very possible. If you can act one way and then act another, what does that tell you? 
You're you're a phony, you're a phony baloney. baloney. Yeah, you're a phony baloney actor. You're yeah. he's uh, a charlatan. Yeah, he's um, uh, uh, his campaign is the ultimate reality show. It could be the ultimate reality show for John Donald Trump. <laughs> when you think about it, if you can bamboozle the whole country in a presidential campaign, then uh, that is the ultimate mm -hmm. reality show. Suppose Donald Trump won the Republican nomination and selected Governor Christie to be his presidential running mate. Uh, well, they're both very similar in personality. Makes sense, since uh, Christie is obviously bored with being our governor, and he relishes the national spotlight. He would become Trump's attack dog. You know what oh, I like? Oh, Christy, you enjoy. You know what I will. Uh, you know what I like about. There's only one thing I like about Chris Christie, only one. What he said during the debate that if, as soon as he gets the chance and he investigates Hillary Clinton, he will tear her to pieces. Something, yeah. something like that. He will. I, I guarantee you, he will tear her. To, I will tear her to pieces. He said that, more or less, and he was very. Uh, his face became like uh, very ravenous when he said that, and I, 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 I love. I would love to see attack dog Chris Christie do that, mm -hmm. because I, I cannot stand Hillary Clinton. While Trump stayed above the fray and was perceived as being presidential, a winning scenario. An obnoxious scenario. Could you imagine a both of them? The potential danger is that Christie would then be in line to become president yeah. if something happened to the Trump. Trump has more compassion for the poor than Christie does. Then President Christie would proceed to do to the United States what he has done to New Jersey. And what a mess that would be. Well, don't forget, if it wasn't for the the Democrats in Trenton, in the state Senate, right? Could you imagine? Forget it. The poor might as well just kiss their asses goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Lane closings on the Arlington Memorial Bridge. Diverting Social Security payments to cover budget deficits. Closed friends placed on the Supreme Court. Ending pensions, right, for certain workers. And an enemies list to rival Nixon's. Could be an exciting time. It could be the end times. Well, we're already in the end times. Oh, there's no doubt about that. It's the uh, Great Tribulation. I think right now, is. right now we are within the first horse of the apocalypse, the white horse. The, the, the great deception that's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, we're going to take a lunch break, right? Yeah. We're going to take yeah. a lunch break. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 and by the aroma, it's pretty hearty lunch break. You will kielbasa. be. Both of us are having smoked kielbasa. Kielbasa. Now you will be joined by our voiceover artist William Hamilton Morrow the Third with uh, his with promo. Mm. And uh, also the words of wisdom of how to, to defeat a conservative. Uh -huh. And we'll be back with the balance of the show. Don't forget to buy the damn newsletter. Oh yeah, get that newsletter. Jeez. Get that newsletter.
Gomorrah. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. We're back. We're back from lunch. Thank you, William Hamilton Morrow the Third, for doing promo. Now, let us sink our teeth into these readings for the balance of the show. Progressive discussions. Progressive warriors. Unite. Unite. Feel the burn. Speaking of Governor Christie of New Jersey, Governor Christie said on Monday that he and Donald Trump have been talking almost daily of late about the real estate mogul's bid for the Republican presidential nomination. But Christie said he has not been campaigning as much recently for Trump because he hasn't asked and because the Republican candidate knows Christie has to tend to his J job, his day job as governor. Well, Christie can definitely be uh, give him legal advice and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, because uh, Chris Christie was getting heat for that, for traveling abroad. Christie said he expects that his role in the campaign may change next month as the June 7 New Jersey primary, meaningful for the first time in several presidential races, draws near. If he picks up the phone and says, hey, I need you to come to fill in the blank, and there's a way I can go, I'll go. Uh, I'm sure he will. Christie said at a news conference in Hoboken. I'm sure he will. When asked if he is advising Trump, Christie said, you have to ask him. The fact is, he asks me questions. We have conversations. Sometimes I just listen. When you ask if I am advising him, the answer is, he's my friend, Christie said. He and I have never been one to mince words with each other. I think that's part of the reason for our friendship being as long-standing as it is. <laughs> well, I'm certainly happy that he has found a uh, such a notable uh, highfalutin friend in Donald Trump. A master. 
because Christy is a lap dog. Alright. Right now. You know. A new study has reinforced findings that life expectancy for rich Americans far exceeds that of the poor. That's a no-brainer. However, researchers who scoured over a billion Social Security and tax records also found that the poor in more affluent, well-educated cities outlived the poor people in less affluent locales. Hmm. Essentially, where you live could make a difference in how long you live. According to the study, for the wealthiest 5% of male Americans, life expectancy since 2001 has increased 2.3 years. For the top 5% of women, it has increased 3 years. For the poorest 5%, <clears throat> life expectancy has remained almost stagnant since 2001. But, researchers found life expectancy for the poor greatly differed from place to place. In wealthy cities like New York, San Francisco, poor residents have a greater life expectancy than those of similar means in other less affluent areas. For example, researchers found a male in the poorest 5% living in New York City has a life expectancy of five additional years than a similarly uh, situated male in Gary, Indiana. Yeah, or possibly Detroit, Michigan. I mean, San Francisco happens to be a very progressive city, and uh, San, Fr San Francisco is very health conscious. There are, there are many organic markets there. Uh, they, they are just, um, they're just all around very progressive there. You know? so same thing with Seattle, Washington. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. Poor people in the industrial Midwest were found to fare the worst in terms of life expectancy. Researchers theorized that in these wealthier cities, public health policies and health norms are usually better and could influence residents of different income levels. The study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. See, see, way back in the day, when um, the poor more or less uh, lived on family farms, the poor back then ate much healthier than the, uh, the rich because the rich people were consuming refined foods. You know, you know, at the, uh, with the invention of white flour and uh, the usage of white sugar. So the high fiber uh, diets with all the roughage that the poor was consuming back then because they, they were self-sustaining uh, members of uh, family-owned farms ate much healthier. Now, today, the cheap, affordable food in the supermarkets being that the family farms is like almost extinct and people moved to the city moved to the cities during the industrial revolution now the poor have to well i mean they don't have to some well often they're forced to if they have families they buy the refined garbage because mm -hmm. it's cheaper it's cheaper. I mean, if they went and tr got a healthy salad somewhere, it would actually uh, cost much more money than uh, 
the dollar uh, menu at uh, McDonald's or Burger King. Well, even in the Bible, Daniel ate better than the king. Yeah. Because he ate lower down on the totem pole. Yeah, and, and back then, the lower down on the totem pole meant high fiber, you know, more, more uh, uh, no unrefined foods. Back yep. then, they called it roughage. And uh, but it's different now. These poor families just can't afford to eat uh, organic, non-GMO foods. Mm -hmm. They're too expensive, so they have to stretch their whatever little food stamps they have left. They have to uh, be able to stretch it more. It's, and you know that's why you see a lot of obesity with the poorest of people, especially the um, the minorities. Obe accounts of obesity and obesity-related diseases, with very rare exception. Art dealers should be free to display the works that they wish. Well, mm. But that doesn't seem to be true in Englewood, New Jersey, where oh. a dealer is being threatened with fines and jail time That's true. for having the temerity to show a painting that featured a woman's bare derriere. Wait, wait, wait. You read this last week. This is an update. This is an update. And my co my remark last week was that all the Renaissance paintings of old always showed uh, a bare ass nudity, nudity in of general, breasts and butt. All the little putai were nude. Yeah, but but the women were very uh, they were extra curvaceous. If you know what I mean, they called it voluptuous. That's correct. That's like um, that's like a nice way of saying fat, fat, fat. The overreaction by a city inspector has now prompted a federal civil rights suit and has shown light on a city ordinance that needs to be revised if not repealed. And I think prints, photographs of the old paintings that we just mentioned would help uh, a great deal in the case. This dispute began in January when the owner of the Borghi Fine Arts Gallery, Inc., on East Palisade Avenue, was cited by the city for refusing to remove a nude painting. I find it very odd that it's happening in northeastern New Jersey a suburb of New York City and not some deep south evangelical state. That's what shocks me the most. Like beauty, nudity must be in the eye of the beholder mm -hmm. because the painting in question showed merely bare buttocks. And the buttocks are, are is a large bustle group. It is not what you would call a sexual organ. There was no allegation that the painting was obscene. Even though it's arousing. Yeah. Gallery owner Laura Borghi refused to remove the painting until she changed her show. She then displayed another nude painting in the window but was not cited the second time. Did you imagine if she had a, a, a sculptor's uh, um, display of a, of, 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 of a, a big dick and a pair of balls? They, the town would uh, have well, a heart attack. The Borgie filed suit last week claiming the city's ordinance is unconstitutional. The ordinance was adopted in 1992. Really? And besides, nudity forbids sexual activities or any sexual paraphernalia from being depicted on displays visible from the street and or it, any public place. Right, and, and this painting does, it does not fall into that category. We don't know precisely why the ordinance was adopted, 
more than 20 years ago, but mm. like all laws, enforcement must be done with a heavy dose of common sense. Mm. Hey, I was in Seagirt, New Jersey one time on the beach, and I, I was flying my kite, and uh, I had to pull it down because uh, there's an ordinance about uh, that goes back to World War II about flying kites hey. because of, uh, I guess, um, German spies giving signals to German U-boats or something. And it took me 20 minutes to pull the kite down. Yeah, how about that? But, that. But, but but people's beach umbrellas blowing out of the sand and and rotating down the beach where they it could poke somebody oh that was fine for Seagirt New Jersey you know that seems lacking here does a painting of a bare derriere constitute sexual activity or paraphernalia would an ordinary person consider it obscene? Most reasonable people would say no, as pointed out by Borghi's lawyer. Michael Angelo's famous nude sculpture of David would violate the tenets of Englewood's ordinance. However, David had a small dick. He didn't have a large one. No, it was, uh, the, the water was very cold, you know, uh, it, it was... It shrunk! It shrunk! It shrunk! It shrunk! George Costanza. <laughs> you have to allow for shrinkage, you know. City regulations apparently would have permitted Borgie to display the partially nude painting in an enclosed area not visible from a public street. Give me a break. That may sound like a compromise, but it isn't. This was not sexually graphic content. It was a painting! Let me tell you something. With today's computer savvy uh, young people, and, and this involves kids, when their guardians and parents are not looking, they can very easily Google anything they want and see it. You know what I mean? Unless you have a block of such things, but I mean, if there's a will, there's a way. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 a tasteful painting of buttocks is, believe me, is not going to uh, corrupt anyone's mind. It's, it's, it's absurd. Anyway, continue. Those outside the Republican Party who are bashing Donald Trump fail to realize that Ted Cruz is worse. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Cruz holds many of the same objectionable positions as Trump on immigration and religion, but disguises them with better code words. In addition, Cruz wants to abolish the IRS, eliminate departments of education, energy, and commerce. What about the anti And return to the gold standard. What about the anti-sexuality of this lunatic? The uh, 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 wanting to uh, execute uh, doctors who perform abortions. Insane. Anybody today who wishes to go back on the gold standard is telling you one thing. They don't want a lot of money around. Because when we were on the gold standard, you can't print as much money as the economy may need. Oh, may need. And, may need, yeah. and, if you are going to give gold for every dollar that somebody gives you from China or Europe or etc., you'll be out of gold in no time, my friend. You know, in other words, four cocks, I mean, knocks, 
Fort Knox will be drained. Yes. That, that's if there's still gold sitting in Fort Knox. Yes, yes. That's another conspiracy theory yes. uh, documentary. Yes. Um, yeah, so, uh, so the gold standard would bring the dollar to a value of 100 pennies apiece. Is that correct? Gold was $35 an ounce. So, so the monetary value of the dollar would soar under gold. Under conditions right now, gold is over a thousand dollars. But, but there are dangers. There are yeah. perils. There are perils associated with going back on the gold standard, like you just said. Yeah, right. because you can never print more money yeah. than you have gold. Right. Right now, you know? which would screw all these people. I guess. No, not all these people. Us. The little guy. The little guy will be totally screwed. Yeah. Yeah. And this uh, this doesn't count the evangelical cultist laws mixing church and state that this lunatic would be uh, doing. Mm -hmm. He opposes abortion, even in the case of rape or incest, and explicitly supports an evangelically Christian nation. Cult. Trump's positions on these issues, no matter how sketchy or ill-informed, don't come close to these radical proposals. Trump does not mix church and state. Cruz has shown that he values winning the debate over developing cooperative compromises. I fear that he would focus the power of the presidency on new radical interpretations of mainstream legislation to weaken long-standing policies in order to advance his agenda. Much as President Obama's opponents claim Obama has done. And as his Senate colleagues said repeatedly before they drank the Kool-Aid, he won't listen to anyone but himself. For all these reasons, Cruz scares me much more than Donald Trump. And rightfully so. Trump has had a lifetime in New York to appreciate the benefits of multiple viewpoints. Cruz does not have the same experience, nor does he see it as an advantage in the real world. Well, the Republican voters are divided uh, right now with Trumpeters on one side of the fence and uh, evangelical uh, zealot cultists on the other side. Just like with the Democratic Party, you have um, um, the Bernie supporters versus the uh, Hillary Clinton supporters um, <coughs> that um, are very different from one another, just like Trump is to Ted Cruz. So you have uh, the uh, divis uh, a division of both sides. And um, I know why Bernie Sanders ran as a Democrat, it's obvious. Uh, I, I am no uh, fan of the two-party system. I do not like the Democratic Party or the Republican Party because it involves uh, money and politics. Plain because they are both corrupt. Yes. Both corrupt. Yes, and free market capitalism uh, was only designed to help the rich. It's rigged. All right, uh, what are we, how are we doing on time? Check the... Uh, the, uh, the shadow on the on the sundial. All right, maybe one more. I am a thirty-six year old woman. Yeah. Who is in a loveless marriage? Loveless. We do not spend time together, nor do we have sex. Oh. Uh. For the past four years, I have had an on-again, off-again affair with a guy from my church. 
maybe you, you know there's two sides to every story sometimes the woman drives the man away from her you know it depends how she treats him he is 10 years younger and everything I have ever wanted oh so she's like the uh, the guy the guy with the male menopause she she's a cougar she's she's, she's, cougar, she, she's yes. a cheating cougar my number one problem is that I know adultery is wrong and goes against everything I have ever believed in. I always tell myself that this is the last time but when he wants to meet again, I don't have the strength to say no. Because of lust. Lust. She has the, the desire, the uwalia. Now the thing is, uh, did she sit down with her husband and ask him uh, if he will go to counseling to try to save the marriage instead of having an affair? We have heard nothing to that effect yet. Yet, yet, right. We have everything going for us in the physical department, but I know we never have a lasting relationship. I'm not writing to ask if what I'm doing is wrong because I know it is. I'm writing because I need your help, advice on how to say no when you are in love with the person well, but don't want them to know. It depends on uh, how, how much she wants to save her marriage. Uh, 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 is it worth for her to try to save it? You know, I mean, if, you, if she really cares about saving it, she would stop, stop, stop the affair. My lover lost his virginity to me. Yeah, my ass. Bullshit. Maybe he asked virginity too. <laughs> Hope that wasn't the ass in the window in Englewood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And, 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 and tell, yeah, and, and I'm the Dalai Lama. Yeah. He lost his virginity at his age. To her. And I'm having trouble understanding why he still wants to be with me after all this time. He must be a real dork. This guy. Is, is it because I'm just easy? Yes. And he knows he can have sex with no commitment? Yes. That is true. Or does he actually care about me? But knows he can't have me all to himself. He wants to blow his load. I am ashamed about my behavior and looking for a way to just say no. <laughs> Dear Abby's answer, you may be attracted to your lover because you are essentially alone in your marriage. There is a solution for your problems, but it won't be pleasant. Tell your husband what has been going on. Oh. And, and why. Uh, oh, tell him everything? And end the marriage. Oh, she's, she's, in other words, she's not telling her to try to save the marriage? I wonder why. Whatever happened to counseling, to to a psychologist or a social worker? Hmm. Marriage, which appears to have been over for a long time. Well, the, the, mm, God, it's over when you can't save it. I mean... Well, that's what she's saying. It but, was over a long time ago. Well, uh, So get out. Maybe... Maybe they grew apart for reasons that are mutual. Maybe it's not, maybe, you know, things just don't happen out of, out of thin air. It takes two to dance that tango. But it's over. You mean sometimes? Sometimes it, it's over. It's actually over? Why? Because when the fat lady sings. When somebody says it's over or, or, or they don't want to. Like, like, can't saving the marriage 
should not be confused with not wanting to save the marriage. The marriage was dead. But dead. Well, well. So then why why well, save it? Because, well, you know, when people get married, they have this Hollywood storybook. You know, uh, these unrealistic expectations. But you know, shit happens. You know. The real world sets in, mm -hmm. and uh, one thing that takes romance out of marriage is having kids, because the kids are very draining and very demanding of your time. That Once the smoke clears... I disagree with these people. Ask your lover the questions about his intentions Smart. that you mentioned to me and then decide whether to continue seeing him. He may be in love with you, but if he is, the question of whether you love him or whether he's just a convenience remains. Of this I am certain, you are not his sex slave. And when you think you have a better option, you will find the way to just say no. I disagree with this this woman because I think the, I think uh, they should try to save the marriage with counseling before they uh, call it quits. Try to try to find out why they grew apart. That's all. What's that? I don't want to see a picture of her and her. Doris Roberts. Oh, for God's sakes. <clears throat> oh, it's, the article is chop. What? Well, it's chop because that's not the article I pulled out. Okay. No. Do it. Yeah. I just no, happened no, to turn it over. Th does it, like, continue this way? I don't care. That's not the article I pulled out. Oh, you mean you? This is. That's correct. You read the. Oh, okay. Thank you. Wow, she was that old. I like Bernie Sanders and his passion. I would support many of his ideas. Unfortunately, they are ideas and not realistic possibilities. For example, he says, "Break up the big banks." Very good. But how? Especially with as strong a Republican opposition as there is. In interviews where he has been asked how, regarding his proposals, he has no realistic answers. He is also weak on foreign policy. Additionally, with all his great ideas, where has he been all the years he was in Congress? I see no bills bearing his name to effectuate most of the policies and now his spouses. That's a lie. He's got many bills. They weren't acted on because he got no support. Big and even great ideas are worthless if there's no way to implement them. His self-labeling as a socialist would be fodder for whoever is the Republican nominee and could alienate many Americans and cause the Democrats to lose. Remember George McGovern? Hillary Clinton may not be perfect, but her general policies would accomplish close to many of the same or similar ends Sanders is seeking. No way. And at least she has a realistic understanding of how to try to accomplish them. She also has the foreign policy chops, so lacking in Sanders, as well as all of the Republican candidates that we need in these troubled times. Uh huh. It's great that many have been stirred by Sanders' compassion and rhetoric and have been willing to take part in the political process. It is time, however, for them to be realistic and not take a chance 
on electing one of the terrible Republican candidates. Hey, Ber Ber Bernie has more supporters than people think if they wrote him in. I, I disagree with this imbecile. I would hope that if and when Hillary secures the nomination, that Sanders supporters bring their passion to her side. To her corrupt side. Her corrupt corporatist side, yes. Well, you know the old standby in American politics. You always got to vote for the lesser of two evils. The lesser of two evils is still evil. Exactly. And, and that's and why nothing ever gets changed. And that's why nothing changes, nothing right. gets done. How much do you think is really going to get done? Uh, Barack Obama sounded fantastic. Oh, did he? At the beginning, and Hillary Clinton savagely attacked him. But he sounded pretty damn good. But he ended up becoming very corporatist. So if you're if you're part of the two-party system, if you're still in the two-party system, and you're corporatist, and you're taking all that money from the top one percent. Mm -hmm. Of course you owe favors in return to the top 1%. So how are things going to ever change for the poor and the middle class? Never. Never. The system has to be changed. The system is no good. And um, Hillary Clinton, just like most Democrats, are part of the system. They're part of the corporatist system. This has been a Mega Life 21 production. Dolores Roberts uh, was in the in the 1980s uh, series Remington Steel. I knew to die because I never watched it. Remington Steel wasn't that Pierce Brosnan? Yes, it was. I don't. Re well, of course she probably looked much different, and younger. I, you know, I should Google it just to see how she looked back then. It's incredible. Possible. Then she was. Uh, she did some Neil Simon. Uh, Broadway. Broadway, yeah. Uh, yeah. Red Hot Lovers or something. I don't know. Anyway, do we have something small to, to I end I have two it? smalls to finish here. To end it. All right, go ahead. On Wednesday night, tens of thousands gathered at New York City's Washington Square Park. They came to here to see the stand with Senator Bernie Sanders. Never heard a peep of it in the mainstream media. If you think Sanders and Hillary Clinton are slightly different version, variations, versions of the same ideology, you are mistaken. I like this person already. Clinton represents the establishment wing of the Democratic Party. They think it's okay to get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in speaking fees from the Wall Street and big bank moguls. Who nearly destroyed our nation? Two hundred fifty thousand dollars speaking fee is actually a bribe masquerading as a speaking fee. A seat at one of Hillary's most lavish fundraising dinners often costs more than the annual salary of a full-time minimum wage worker. More money, more, hey, more money than the annual wage of a, of a senator or congressman is one speaking fee when you think about it. Sanders represents the populist roots of the Democratic Party. His average contribution is $27. He is inspiring ordinary Americans 
to participate in a political revolution to create a more just and equitable nation. It's not surprising that Sanders rallied with striking Verizon employees. He has spent decades of his career fighting for working families. He stood with the workers against NAFTA and was against the TPP before any poll told him to say so. He voted against the Iraq war and predicted the disastrous unintended consequences that would result. Sanders is a Democrat who will carry forward the ideas of FDR's New Deal and LBJ's Great Society into the 21st century. Clinton represents the corporate wing of the Democratic Party. Jam. If you are part of the 99% and you can't feel the burn... He's more like JFK, not LBJ. LBJ, we got civil rights, Medicare, unemployment, um, uh, 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 Medicaid, the Great Society. L LBJ pushed this? Yes, he pushes. got it through. Got these laws through. Okay. But there was also the Vietnam War. That was dumped on his lap. That's correct. And the he v had to resign. The Vietnam... He didn't go for a second term. The Vietnam War... What'd we get for it? It's a little... Vietnam is such a tiny country. South Vietnam and North Vietnam combined is a small country. Mm -hmm. uh, what are their natural resources that's so damn valuable to the United States government? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. That's what I just said. <clears throat> what we ever get from it? I can't think of a damn thing. Fifty-seven thousand people dead. Fish sauce. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. The country in ruins. It's a damn. It's amazing what they are today. Well, they they prove that guerrilla warfare surpasses the effectiveness of a trained modern military. Because despite the, despite all the Agent Orange and all the bombs dropped from B-52s, they still lost the war. Did you see the other day? We sent some B-52s after ISIS. And what did they do? Bomb a bunch to of bomb tents? bomb ISIS. Bon bomb tents? The, the B-52s can carry more bombs than the fighters. So the carpet bombing. That's, so that they, comes from a B-52, right? So they use the 52s instead of the, uh, the, uh, the you know, the, the, right. the jets. So you could you, you could annihilate more territory with a B-52. But you guys, the ISIS right? doesn't have territory. They have cities with innocent people in them. They they use they like the the rat rat um uh, much like Hamas extreme uh. uh, uh, uh a Muslim cultist extremists and ha like Hamas, whatever, ISIS, uh, uh, the former Al-Qaeda too, they like, they tend to like to use uh, innocent civilian human shields. Yes. Like children and... Uh, well, they also like to use innocent people to blow them up. So they, they in other words, they're, uh, it's like an infestation. They're, they're in the city loaded with civilians and they're all kind of like uh, assimilated and blended in hiding out in the cities and, and you can't identify them because when they're when they're not making a propaganda of a video they're probably dressed like civilians so it's not like they're out in the desert marching in yeah. lockstep mm -hmm. All together, yeah. You know, like when That's the United the problems. like when the United. So then why are we using all these bombs? Like when the United States was um, attacking um, uh, Saddam Hussein's forces, these were military. This was military personnel. Yeah, yeah. An, an army. 
An army, right. An right. actual national army. Right. Yeah. But not this. No. Bernie Sanders' rhetoric, especially on fossil fuels and nuclear for electricity, were nonsensical. <laughs> nonsensical. His pronouncements to reduce <laughs> carbon emissions are suicidal. You know, Denmark, I just saw on the news that Denmark is doing great with the, with the green uh, alternative energy movement. Scandinavia, Germany are doing great with alternative non-fossil fuel. America lives and dies on electricity. On other subjects, his answers and views seem equally vague and unrealistic. He definitely lost the last debate. What? what? He, he wins every debate. What's, what's with this? Uh, who is this a female now carpet muncher or is this a, 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 a dude that has a fetish for Hillary Peter. Clinton? Peter, you're an imbecile. From Ridgewood. You're a, you're a, a waste of sperm. You probably look like a doofus and a dork. You should be cracked with my blackthorn shillelagh right on that pea brain of yours. Anyway. The last one. Okay. The Record, that's our local newspaper, Yeah. published a large two-column picture of Hillary Clinton talking with Verizon strikers. Get the fuck out of here. A smaller picture of Sanders appeared below hers. Both candidates appear to side with the workers. Oh, really? While Both. a picture may be worth a thousand words, they may not be the right words. <sighs> Sanders joined the picket line, pointing out that the CEO of Verizon makes $18 million a year. Wow. Now that's highway robbery uh, that's 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 obscene that's obscene but of course the man who marches with the strikers gets the small photo in the Bergen record shame on you corporate whore Bergen record newspaper chisel is all a shame the CEO wants to freeze workers pension so Make he, layoffs easier. So what does he want? Another $18 million a year? Use contract workers and has left workers without a contract since August. On the other hand, Verizon paid Hillary Clinton $225,000 for a single speech. For a single speech. That, that that she claims they insist that they take the money, almost like they're forcing the money on her. And and of course, of course, um, um, we all know why the uh, the uh, the print. I, I don't want to call them the media. The um. um um, um, the, um, the press? Or would the you press. consider them the American press? Yeah, that's what they consider themselves. The American press, like the American media, wants Hillary to shine the brightest, uh, you know, and um, and um, her loyalty to um, <clears throat> the uh, average uh, worker is is phony. It's phony. It's not there. What kind of uh, 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 what, did, what was the word you just used for the average worker? Her her loyalty. Loyalty to, to the average worker. How her. can they, she have a loyalty towards the little guy when her and her husband just made one hundred? And eleven million dollars a year. So that was just a photo op for Hillary Clinton. 
her her that speaking is correct, to, sir. Her speaking to striking a Verizon employees. That is correct. Like so that she would appear to be on their side. Yeah. Interesting. And, and the guy who marched with the Verizon workers and other striking. Well, you see what has happened. And Bernie Sanders marches. They got pictures of Bernie getting arrested, getting his ass kicked, going to jail, fighting for blacks, and guess who the blacks are voting for? Hillary Clinton. Thank you. Blacks and Latinos. I don't see any handcuffs on her. I don't see her getting her ass kicked. He marches with Martin Luther King in the 1960s for the Civil Rights Movement and the minorities collectively are, are voting for Hillary Clinton. Right. Right. You figure this out. You figure this out. Same thing with, with poor people living in shacks in Kentucky voting Republican. Americans are their own worst enemy. They cut their nose off to spite their face. Um, they shoot themselves in the foot. I don't understand any of it. It's illogical, just like it's also illogical that Bernie Sanders' campaign manager is doing nothing about the voter fraud. Nothing about the fact that Hillary's delegates are doing the audits on the primaries. It's like the fox guarding the hen house. That's second nature in our government. We bring in Larry Summers. We bring in uh, uh, the big wigs from uh, Wall Street, but et cetera, that, but to run certain programs in our government. But that proves to the public that it's it, rigged. Yes. It proves but that it's rigged. But the public doesn't care because they vote that same stupid well, why, way. Why, it, why is the, the Sanders campaign tolerating it? Aren't there legal actions that could be taken when voter fraud is proven? Do, what about an impartial third party doing the auditing? Ah, uh, now you have stepped on something very important that is lacking. Unbiased. That's correct. We need independent people and programs to keep it's called regulation. Just like regulation. Just, just like when you see a stamp that says certified organic. I'm not saying this is this is a, sh a shamrock, but let's say a food product has a stamp, certified organic. Now, what do you trust more, an independent, reputable uh, a, a, a company, an accredited or uh, organization that certifies food, or do you trust the USDA organic label? I go with the independent, reputable organization. Not the that US is what is the, missing. It's called regulation. Regulation. No yes. one is held accountable. Correct. Period. Correct. Okay. Anyway, the, the CEO has poured money into the Clinton Foundation. Nothing but nothing, including pictures, can take the place of factual journalism. Well, the New York Times endorsed Hillary Clinton the same... Uh, year, the same uh, part of the year that they donated money to her campaign. You know, it's like, uh... <laughs> it's like it's all corrupt, man! She's buying her lovers. Uh, like you much like the United States does around the world. Internationally. Yeah. Buys their lovers. Yeah. Oh, you hate my guts? All right. Here's, uh, Here's fifty million dollars. Oh, I'm starting to like you now. Yeah, well, you see what that like is done in Africa, don't you? We give all that foreign aid in all those African countries, and then the big boys in the African countries put it into Swiss bank accounts and Cayman Islands, etc. They well, steal it from the people. They steal it from the people. Hey, I heard the same thing in South America, like in Colombia, like yeah. all the donated money. Yeah. All the, the corrupt people on top confiscated all they, the food. Actually, I heard a story where food was sent for the, for the poor children in Colombia, and they took it, they took it to feed their, their livestock. Haiti, the same thing. The livestock. The military takes it. It's a known fact that third world countries are very corrupt. Yeah. 
Philippines? Yeah. The Philippines, they, they said that the people can't, nothing good happens there because, you know, we have to pay out of pocket for everything oh. because our government is corrupt and, uh, you know what I mean? Hey, the more you think about it, the more you do your research, the better Northern Europe looks. At, that's as a uh, uh, an example yeah, well. to the rest of the world, including including the United States. Yeah. Why is it so wonderful? Why would God want to bless America? I'm, ta I'm talking to tea baggers and Republicans. Why would want a God God want to side with and bless America if the America you want is one where everybody has to pay out of pocket for everything? Now my second question is because capitalism is a religion in America my second question okay. well, that, that that's their perception my yes. second question is uh, if you have to pay out of pocket for everything then um, who does uh, America uh, who <laughs> benefits from that kind of uh, America the you big know? boys and girls the fat cats on top the manufacturers because the only the rich can pay out of pocket for everything yeah, but they don't, because they're always looking for a deal. They're always looking for tax cuts. They're always looking for the best buy. You're a multi-billionaire. Well, you know what? A, a, a young guy, I was talking to a couple of young guys that work for Verizon, and they were very progressive. They, 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 they loved all the things we love online, and they like Bernie Sanders a lot, mm -hmm. and very smart. They, and the one kid said to me, um, um, he says, once you're a multi-billionaire, uh -huh. eventually, it's not about money anymore. It's more like about power. Like, yeah. like seeing how much you can get away with. Yeah. You know, because if you're a multi-billionaire... You can buy anything. Yeah. It, it, it's not about, okay, I need to strive to become... A, a, a rich man or a rich or a wealthier man I need more and more you're already a multi-billionaire so, so your buying power is already there and mm -hmm. then some you can get anything you want look at the coke and your money's making money your money yeah. your multi-billions are making yeah. a f fortunes for you with you with you sit with you sitting on your ass doing yeah. nothing and complaining about the poor who, yeah. who are moochers and lazy. Right. So then it becomes about power. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, right. thank you for joining us for Progressive dis Discussions. Remember, Progressive... What do you think Lucifer wanted to do with God? Well, uh, a, a pride, vanity, selfishness, which is all about the same. But he wanted to take over. He wanted to throw God off his throne. So There's your power. So Lucifer, the morning star, had everything going for him. Yes, he did. In all ways, but then he wanted, it wasn't enough. Weren't enough. Okay. Iniquity was found in him. No. Uh -uh. Okay, it wasn't enough. Okay. He wanted to be the top cheese. The cheddar. Well, it better be. The head it cheese. better be real aged, high quality cheddar, and not this uh, crappy processed Velveeta and or whatever American cheese. Um, isn't it funny how the phony processed cheese is called American cheese, and all the other good, real cheeses have an international name to them? Uh -huh. it's, it's funny how that works. Anyway, remember. Feel the burn. Make sure you vote. If you have to, write in Bernie Sanders. Write yeah. in Bernie Sanders if you have to. And uh, Progressive Warriors Unite. And we'll see you next time on Progressive Discussions. Thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't eat no stinking Velveeta or American oh. cheese. They call that processed cheese, processed cheese. food. Cheese like. Oh, when it's a food, that's even worse. It's cheese like. It's cheese like. It's like crafts and singles. Yeah. Uh, uh, one fifty-one percent of it is only real cheese. Cheese whiz, Velveeta, American cheese, is not real cheese because it says processed. Yeah.
Yeah, you you Philadelphia on the cheesesteaks, they want that cheese with it. Because it's cheap. It's cheap. That's why they use cheese whiz on Philly cheesesteaks. Or or Velveeta. That's why they stick freaking home fried fried potatoes in your sandwich. They want to give you less meat. It's all a part of the scamming dishonesty of capitalism. Free market hey, capitalism. Hey, hey, hey. You were telling me before about your Campbell's pork and beans hey. being only eleven a little over eleven ounces a can. 11.5. That's right, Campbell's. You are. A sitting. You are a member of Chislers. Oh percent. man, this guy interrupts me. You are hereby a member of okay. Chisla. Eddie interrupts me again. I'll say it one more time. Okay. You are hereby a member of Chislers Hall of Shame. Campbell's soups.